Okay, then I'm a, today I'm going to show you how to do a um, composite image uh, using Photoshop, of course. And uh, this image here is uh, is what I'm going to show you. This is the finished product. This is two different images put together. And I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do that right now. So I've got uh, two separate Im two separate images my daughter and then this backyard shot and the first thing we have to do is make a selection okay we're just going to pull my daughter out of this image so we want to use the quick selection tool and um, you can uh, it's just like a brush you just click and hold and start painting to make your selection um, along the options palette you can see we've got uh, three buttons here the first one is to uh, create a new selection the second one is add to selection and the third one is subtract from selection and we'll be using these and we might even use um, um, the lasso tool as well so um, new selection and I'm just going to click here and hold and start to draw through the areas that I want. Click and hold and when you let go um, that sort of commits it and you just keep adding to the selection. If you get too much go back over to the area where you're getting more than you want. Hold down the option key you'll see that your selection tool turns into a minus and you click and hold in there and remove that area from your selection and Photoshop will sort of learn as you work what you're wanting and what you're not wanting um, in your selection just slowly move along the edges of your object and it will snap to get things that are similar I'm just going to continue working here. Okay. Work along the hair. Now hair is, you know, lots of little strands of hair are hard to hard to select. But this does a fairly good job of it most of the time. All right, this these little strands of hair out here, I'm actually going to switch to my lasso tool. Make sure that add to selection in the options palette up at the top is clicked and I'm going to click in and drag around that hair to include it okay um, this area around the arm I need to get rid of that I'll just hold down my option key on the keyboard to subtract from selection, I'll go in there and remove. Oops. Go in here. You do need to complete a shape. And I'll subtract that from my selection. Let's see. I'm feathering quite a bit. I'm going to lower my feathering to 20 pixels instead of 60. Subtract from selection. Okay, so there's my selection. Now, you can click on the Refine Edge button on the uh, Options palette. And uh, that will give you an idea of what you've got. Okay, definitely um, need to go back and adjust this. I'm removing too much there. Need to add some more around the hair. Um, I am going to expand my selection a little bit. And see if we can fix some of that here. Uh, not too bad. I am going to feather a little bit more. I'll soften my edges. Looking better. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Um, Let 
looks pretty good. I'll click OK. And that's my selection. Now you can uh, switch over to quick mask mode by clicking the next to bottom button on the tool palette. And anything that is red is not in our selection. Okay? And then you can paint with black using your paintbrush. Paint with black to remove anything that's too much. Like I've still got a little bit too much down here. I'm get a little bit bigger brush. Come in and paint. And around the arm. And paint in there. Okay, definitely want it soft around most of this area. Oops. Zoom in a little bit. Still working in quick mask mode. Painting with black is giving me this red. And painting with white will bring back anything to the selection. And I'm hitting X on the keyboard to toggle between the black and the white. mode, go back to regular mode. Alright, so there's there's my selection. I'm going to switch to my move tool, V on the keyboard. See we get the bounding box here because auto select and show transform controls is shown on the options palette. Click in the area and hold and drag and drop. Okay, now the scaling is going to change depending on the size of the two images. So here is where your transform controls come into play. Alright, so I'm going to take my top right corner. I'm going to hold my shift key down. Holding the shift key down keeps your proportions. And I'll scale this down. And I want her bumped over in the left corner just like she was in the original image. Looks pretty good. I think I'll make it a little bit smaller. Still holding my shift key down. Okay, when you get it where you like it, just hit enter and that will commit the transform. Then you can zoom in and start to adjust some uh, the problems that may have occurred um, from the uh, feathering. And what I'm going to do here is I could just use my eraser or I could create a mask. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the bottom of my uh, um, layers palette to add a mask. And I'm going to paint with black. A little bit smaller brush. And I'm just going to go around and sort of bring the background in a little bit better. Just get rid of any halos that are occurring. A little bit bigger brush. And just sort of soften, yeah, just soften that edge some. Try to get rid of the halo. Holding the shift bar, holding the uh, space bar down to get my hand. Still painting with black on my mask. Smaller brush in here.
smaller brush, use my bracket tools to make my brush smaller. Okay, and I can continue to work, but I'm going to zoom out. And around her hair over here, this really needs some. Let me switch to my zoom tool. Zoom in right here. Yeah, this is really sloppy looking. Back to my brush. Real small. And get in here and pull this stuff out. You could really move meticulous in here if you wanted to. I think I'll just turn my opacity down and just sort of lighten this area some. There we go. That's better. I'm painting more of the gray right now. Okay. Alright, so there she is. Now there's quite a bit more work that can be done. Still, I could clean up some more down here. But, uh, I think I'll call it quits with this. Now, the background is really sharp. Okay, and remember in a formal portrait, which is what this looks like, uh, you want the background to be a little less um, detailed. So I'm going to flip to my background layer. And I'm going to go to my filters and go down to blur. And you're welcome to try any of these blurs. I'm going to try the lens blur. And you can increase or decrease the amount in the blur focal distance. Um, you're welcome to try any of this stuff and sort of explore it and see what it does. But for the sixth speed, I'll just add a little more detail. A little bit more detail. There we go. Wait for your um, preview to refresh so you get a good idea of what you're about to do. And click OK. And ta-da! We've got a composite image that, that works pretty well. And uh, remember, it's a it's a Photoshop file. You can come back and work on it again later. later. Um, but anything you've done to the background is permanent. But I can still work on my masking a little bit. So I would save this and um, keep this as a Photoshop file first. And I'm just going to call this composite one. And I'll just put it on my desktop. You can save it wherever you tend to put your Photoshop files that you're working on. But now I'm ready to turn it in. So save as. Change it to a JPEG. And remember it's going to warn us that we're not going to get layers here. And then you need to title it appropriately and you'll have to check the um, document to find out what I told you to call it. Uh, I think I said collage or something like that, but I'm not sure. Okay, and then put it in your portraits folder. To turn in, choose a uh, large file on the JPEGs option. And there is uh, creating a composite or collaged image in Photoshop.